Hello YouTube Vintage Stereo Restores. Okay, I've been doing a little bit of work on this Nico TRM40 Vintage Germanium Transistor Amplifier. And there's what was in it, two SB33s, Germanium, and here's four new PNP silicon transistors. And they're MJ2955s, which is a 15 amp transistor good to about 60 watts depending on the way you look at it but as strong as they're stronger than that now when you first put them in you can actually turn it on and listen to it and what you're seeing here is actually my headphone adapter because this doesn't have a headphone jack and let's just go top side can't really turn around yet uh, every time I turn something around the bench something falls on the floor right okay I'll tell you a little bit about how this works and how the biasing works. This is a fixed bias amp and the transformer coupling is between the driver transistors on this board and the finals. And what it basically does, it takes the positive and negative swinging waveform and breaks it up into swinging positive and swinging negative. And then the transistors reassemble it. Now, when you first put them in, what you get, you'll actually turn it up and you will get sound. It's distorted, a little bit choppy sounding. And if you use the mini scope on it, you'll see a waveform and then a jag and then a waveform swinging down. You can see it's not assembling the bottom and top halves. There's my demonstration. I want to keep this one short because when you go too long, people tend to turn away. And I understand I have the same thing. This is why videos are only like maybe you know five to twelve minutes. It has to do with the modern attention span. And then you can actually go to and rather than having to watch two hours worth of video to find the ten minutes you want on a particular issue, they're broken up. That's my thinking. Anyway, here you have on each transistor three resistors. And it's kind of hard to see there's it's even harder to solder. The bigger one is actually not an emitter resistor. I'm just going to pull up my schematic here. I should have had this queued up, right? Well, sometimes I just sit down and I do a video. So basically, the two outputs. And there's a 560 ohm resistor. And it says 4.7 ohm there, but they were 3.9 ohm, so it was a substitution at the factory. In order to set the bias, it was actually 0.23 volts for the germanium transistors. That's the turn on at the base of the transistor. And for the silicon ones, you want 0.7. And actually, these need to run a little hotter than that because they just won't sound right. And the rule to do it, well, not a rule, but an axiom, you look for the resistor between base that's getting a feed from the collector if that makes any sense so I took the, the two 3.9 ohm resistors which are down in there they're at the bottom you gotta kind of peel everything back right oh actually you can see it on this one here and the what I do first is I multiply it by 10 so I put a 39 ohm resistor I cut the old one out and just touched it with the soldering iron to tick it on in place so I could test it. Both transistors turned it on. Well, I got sound, like really nice sound sound coming out. No distortion, put my little handheld skill scope on it and the waveforms were joining, like perfectly smooth. But it was running too hot. The transistors were really getting warm fast. That's because they were biased too hard. Now, in a tran in a, let's take a solid state unit that doesn't have these transformers with adjustable bias you might only need like 30 milliwatts of bias which you know which is about 14 millivolts across each emitter resistor these are a little different across the emitter resistor which is the one that's not the biggest but the next smallest one it's a 0.47 wire round you really need about 200 millivolts across there for this to be turned on and to be out of the range of distortion and not overheating. 
So what I did then was I moved from a 39 ohm, I went down to a 22, no, sorry, yeah, 22 ohm, ticked it on. It actually, there's a brief point of transition where the transistor wasn't turning on and then all of a sudden it was there. So it wasn't quite enough bias. Cut that and I went from 22 to 33 ohm. And guess what? That was the sweet spot. Ran it for three quarters of an hour, listened to it, had linear sound across the volume range. Nothing weird, looked good on the scope, put a thousand hertz tone into it. So basically all you're talking about, long and the short of it is, to re-bias for silicon devices, it's one resistor per transistor. And it's some trial and error. Um, I, I might do another one on this later, but I've started on the driver. So I took out, oh, oh there we go. So there's this 2SB77 germanium PMP transistor about 0.3 amps power handling. And that's what was working to drive this. And they're actually fastened to the front face plate for heat sinking. And they run really hot. So I thought, okay, let's put something in. So I'm going with a PNP transistor here. Metal case 2N2905A. So this is about 600 milliamps, 0.6 amps. So double the power handling, so it's in a really safe range. This one needs 0.2 to turn on, this needs 0.7. The bias on the driver is set with these bulbs I was talking about before instead of emitter resistors. Between that and then of course a base resistor on the base giving it bias, it was over two volts. That's just what you search. So in this case, it was a case of just unsoldering one and soldering the other. Going from germanium to silicon, no adjustment needed. There's only one caveat with that. You have mechanical considerations. The other ones are heat sink to here. This is a bigger transistor with a metal case. I've run these without heat sinks and more powerful amps and they're fine. So actually what I did for a test, I ran music through it. One side is the germanium and on one side is the silicon. And do you know what? indistinguishable in volume and sound quality. I was really surprised. They're both running equally well, but why am I continuing? I'm going to put all silicon transistors in here because in the earlier stages they have the phono stage sounds terrible. It's just a symphony of hisses and pops and buzzes. It's terrible. It's those germanium transistors. They're growing crystals inside. They're starting to go well, beyond gone. They still work, but they don't sound good. The idea will be to have a low noise floor and a nice sounding phono stage. And it's really not that many transistors. So there's one, two, three, four there in the preamp, driver five, six, seven per channel. That is very economical design. Anyway, um, I wish I'd play some music to you, but every time I put music of any length, I, the video gets shut down. So you just got to take my word for it. It will work well. Um, thanks for watching and listening.